Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. I'm so excited for today's episode because Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor, is joining me. Dr. Katie Woodley is an expert holistic veterinarian and the founder of The Natural Pet Doctor, who is passionate about integrating Eastern into Western medicine to help pets achieve optimal health and vibrancy by utilizing nutrition, acupuncture, and herbal medicine. She loves partnering with pet parents to provide guidance and specialized care to help their pets live their best lives through online programs programs and ebooks, consultations and webinars so that they can thrive rather than just survive. We chat about her journey, how holistic approaches to medicine can help your pet, and we even chat a little bit about music. I'm so excited to bring you this episode without any further delay. Here's Dr. Katie. So Dr. Katie, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, how you what made you want to become a veterinarian and how you decided to go down the path of holistic medicine. Yeah. So I wanted to be a veterinarian since being a little girl. It's funny. My grandparents actually had a picture I drew when I was like in kindergarten and it had me with all these animals and I was like, I'm going to be a vet one day. So I was like the, you know, the traditional, like knew I wanted to do that. However, I kind of got a little bit, I wasn't sure I wanted to go the vet route. Um, as I was growing up and through high school and in college, I, I come from a family of like doctors and my mom was a nurse practitioner and my mom was like an animal savior. Like all the animals would show up on our doorstep. Like we had a, a feral cat show up with three kittens we took in. And, you know, so there were always animals that I was surrounded by, but I loved medicine. And so I kind of went through this thing, like, do I want to go into human medicine? Do I want to go to medical school? And as I was doing a lot of volunteer work in the hospital, I was also doing a lot of volunteer work in the vet clinics. And I always felt like something was missing in the human side. Like I like people, I like working with them, but there was just like, there was so much more like completeness to me when I was working with animals. And so that was like the ultimate decision um, after I finished college. And then so I went into vet school. I actually went to uh, New Zealand for vet school. So I'm originally from Colorado, but went to New Zealand. It was like the same as going to vet school in the state, same accreditation, just took the same test, but it was in really neat New Zealand. So I got to experience a different country. And just like most veterinarians out there, we were trained on the conventional side. So when I came out as a new graduate, you know, I practiced conventional and I prescribed a lot of the same diets and, you know, use the medications. And I just didn't know there was another realm of medicine out there. And what changed for me is when we moved back to the state. So I married a New Zealander and brought him back with me. And six months after we got back to the States, he developed an autoimmune disease. And so now is a completely different story. And I will never forget sitting on the other side of the doctor's office, the desk, and hearing there's nothing else you can do other than these really strong immunosuppressives. And unfortunately, they don't work very well and they can come with a lot of side effects. And I was like, super deflated, right? And you know, that wasn't even my diagnosis. I couldn't even imagine how my poor husband felt. And walked out of there and I was like, no, there's another way and we're going to just have to find it. And so through that journey, through learning about his health and learning about holistic medicine on the human side and learning about essential oils and different diets and herbs and all sorts of like this entire world that just opened up, I was like, why am I not using this for my patients? Here I am telling my clients like for end stage cancer, chronic allergies, 
where we're not getting any relief from conventional medications, I'm sitting here telling them this, exactly the same thing that we heard and how deflating and unempowering is that? And so I became acupuncture certified, Chinese herbal medicine certified, went down to food therapy and started integrating all of this in. And then a couple of years ago, I love this side of medicine so much and being able to focus on this. I created my own business, The Natural Pet Doctor, so I could focus on that and truly help them and do the things that I love every single day. So that's how my little journey started and developed to where we are like eight, nine years later from, you know, sitting across and getting that horrible diagnosis. Wow. And I'm imagining he's doing so much better. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, here's the thing. We've been able to avoid strong immunosuppressives. And it's something where, you know, there's always a journey and things can change. And it's always a good reminder too. like, it's not just about nutrition. There's other factors to mm -hmm. health. And like, especially with the way the world has been, stress can be a huge you know, piece to the puzzle that's commonly missed for healing ourselves, but also healing our pets. And so being able to like, it's, it's a blessing in disguise, essentially, you know, I never wish autoimmune disease on anyone. However, it really opened up our eyes to how our bodies work and what we truly need to help heal them. And a lot of it translates over to animals. A lot of it's the same, which is great. A lot of it is the same. And I, I, I actually really love that you're story is a little bit opposite of mine because I find I, for me, so many people in like on, on my side of it, that aren't veterinarians that aren't medically trained, <laughs> we have animals with issues and we find holistic medicine. And then we realize, oh my goodness, I need to be applying this to me as well and my family. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it's kind of opposite, but then there are those people like you who, who started on the human side. Um, and I think that either way you get there, the fact that you get there is, is um, incredible and the most rewarding part because um, it's, it's such a shame that our society just doesn't, in general, put a whole lot of um, credibility into holistic medicine. I don't know about you, but I see a lot of negativity Anytime I post anything holistic based on social media, it's, you know, the, the yeah. trolls are there. <laughs> yes, they are. And, you know, it's here's I always say we do the best we can with the information we have at the time. And I've been there like I've had three pets that have gone through cancer. So I've had my own pets through this journey, too. And, you know, my two cats. We're at the very beginning um, and I didn't have a lot of these tools. And then our dog developed a brain tumor. He started having seizures and thank goodness I had tools to help him because we were told there's nothing else you can do and to just take him home and bring him back in a week. And we were able to gain an additional year of life. So, you know, being on both sides, but also being so grateful that these, that I had the skills and knowledge to be able to not say like there was nothing else and, you know, put him down. But going back to like, I mean, colleagues also, this is why I've kind of come to my own business too, because working in a conventional setting and wanting to integrate in a lot of these holistic modalities, I think what happens is the conventional side looks at hol holistic, right? As not mm -hmm. science-based. And the problem is, is when we look at a holistic approach and we look at a conventional approach. So you'll hear like Eastern versus Western medicine. And the way I approach it is it, it's not one or the other. We can integrate them together and that gives us the best results. But the big difference is, and also why we get a lot better results when we look at holistic or an Eastern medicine approach is that we're actually looking at the whole body. So I always say holistic with a W because everything's interconnected. And this is the hard part with a lot of the way that the studies are set up is that we have a drug to treat a symptom. But when we look at a pet or we look at ourselves from a holistic perspective, you have different environments, you have different foods coming in, you have different stress levels, you have a different microbiome imbalance. And so being able to say like this supplement or this herb works the same way for every person, we're actually like we're doing a disservice to ourselves and we're 
we're not able to, like, that's the hard part about studying it from a traditional, like, scientific study. And Chinese herbal medicine doesn't work that way. We can have the same disease, we can have the same symptoms, but that pet has a different underlying imbalance. And I might use a different herbal supplement for this pet versus this pet who still has, like, Cushing's or diabetes because they have different patterns. And so that's the hard part with it. But there is more and more science coming out which is good. But I think the biggest thing too, is that for people that are looking at us and saying, this is all woo woo medicine, it doesn't work. We have to go and look at conventional medicine and it has its time and place. And it's important for acute symptom care or emergencies. That's where it Mm -hmm. should be utilized. You know, if your pet gets hit by a car, you want to go into the vet clinic and have care right away. You know, you need to support them, stabilize them with conventional drugs. However, we're only treating symptoms. We're not using a drug to fix the root imbalance of why that happened in the first place. So allergies are a great example. And they're one of the most frustrating conditions to treat when you only use conventional medication to treat it. And a lot of times it comes down to a gut health issue. There might be a yeast overgrowth. We could have heavy metals. We do a lot of heavy metal testing through hair tests. And that was the missing link that we didn't know about. And when we heal that and we help the detox pathways because we looked at the whole system, all of a sudden the allergies go away and that pet's more comfortable. We didn't have to keep them on drugs like Apoquel or Cytopoint injections. Sometimes we need to use it short term to give that pet comfort. But this is where looking at the body as a whole is so different. And it's just a mindset shift and we're not taught that way. So it's a huge change for a lot of people that have never been exposed to it before, or were forced to go down this path because of developing, you know, autoimmune disease, like our, our journey of stumbling upon something, we needed a solution and conventional medicine was not working. Yeah. So. And, and conventional medicine has really, um, cut for lack of a better word, brainwashed us all into believing that there's a pill for everything and that like, you know, your doctor or your veterinarian, and and I I don't mean this in a derogatory fashion at all, but like they're the only ones that can help. And being a veterinarian, of course, you know so much that the average person doesn't know about, you know, our pets, but there's a whole world out there. Like you were just talking about, uh, yeah, doing it, you know, doing a detox is very trendy right now, but like, how, how much is that going to help you if all of your pathways aren't open? <laughs> right? Like you, there, there's so much to, yeah. Yeah. to working in the body, but, um, I really, and I don't, I want to say for some reason, like my mind is not, is, is not telling me if it was an email from you or if it was an email from Dr. Will Falconer that I read a couple of days ago about even with that emergency care um, you were talking about, that's, that's where our traditional, you know, veterinary medicine shines in like, you know, your dog got hit by a car or um, I, it might've been Dr. Will um, Falconer. And he was talking about it, a canine who was airlifted from, he was a police dog who was shot in the line mm, of duty. Was, and he was yeah. talking about yeah. how they should be adding Arnica like immediately in these emergency situations to just kind of further prove how, how to really integrate the two, the, tr- you know, our traditional medicine. He was talking about how important it is. Like, yeah. Ha- yeah. The, our traditional medicine is great for those emergency situations, but even if they made that one little change and then all the emergency kits had Arnica in them, <laughs> um, how much quicker, uh, yeah. how much better off that dog would have been by the time he got to the vet hospital. But then like, you know, the, the um, process of healing could have been quicker as well. <laughs> yep. And uh, here's the other thing too, like acupuncture also, like I see a lot of like the aftercare, what happens is, and I see this with my patients and my clients is that they go through something traumatic like that. And there's so much we can do to support the healing after also. So, but so many of these pets aren't being offered rehab or acupuncture or even using supplements that are going to help reduce like the possibility of scar tissue, or if there's going to be chronic inflammation that builds up because there's so much more research now coming out too, where these medications that sometimes we need to use, right? Like the dog was shot, like we needed to use pain medication, you know, that's important, 
But those can also affect the microbiome and can affect other pathways in the body. And we're not taught to think about that. And so it, a lot of these vets just don't know. And then what can happen is, is if this pet had an imbalance prior to that situation, now we just potentially made it worse. So we might not have seen outward symptoms. And I find this is kind of like a trap we get involved in for ourselves and our pets that just because we don't see something outward doesn't mean something's not occurring inward. And I always say we're on this spectrum of disease, right? Where we have down here, like death, of course, right? You know, at some point we're all gonna pass. And down here, like perfectly optimized health. There's no, like we deal with acute inflammation, we resolve it, everything's working together the way it's supposed to. And as we go through life, we're constantly traveling along this spectrum of health. And what will dictate how well we do is the foods we eat, the supplements we take, the environment, reducing toxins, supporting a healthy emotional like status, you know, stress level wise. So there's so many things that we can do, which is so much more empowering than mm -hmm. like the reactive medicine and watching and waiting for something to occur and then taking action because it's so much harder to reverse and heal disease than it is to prevent it in the first place. So, you know, this type of approach is, I, every, every day, all day long, I would rather do this type of approach than go back to a reactive approach and just wait and see what happens. Um, because, you know, even, I think the the hardest part for pet parents when they get started on this journey is the overwhelm, right? There's so much information. What do I start with? Am I going to create harm for my pet? And a lot of times just doing one little simple thing, like topping the pet food for your dog with like cruciferous vegetables makes a huge difference to their overall health. And then it gives you more confidence to take the next step and then the next step. And, you know, so I think that's a big, like, that's where a lot of people get stuck with like creating this holistic life and being overwhelmed yeah, and, and not I sure love where to that go. You keep saying the word empowering. Um, that's something that I talk about a lot too, because it is very empowering when you have educated yourself and you have additional knowledge outside of the, you know, outside of the box that we <laughs> traditionally live in and how, how much better you feel, how much more confident you are walking into your vet's office even um, when you have done your research and you're educated and you know what you want out of your vet visit <laughs> and what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. And the, the courage and the bravery to say, thank you for that information. I appreciate it. I'm going to take it with me, think about it and make a decision, right? Like, because the fact is, and we'll talk about this a little bit yeah. later, I know you offer online services, which is amazing, um, and people need to know about them. Um, but the fact is that there are not enough holistic veterinarians right now for the people out there that want them. Um, so figuring out ways to um, create a team of people to help you raise your pet the way that you want to raise your pet <laughs> is so important. So being able to have those conversations with your veterinarian mm. and be empowered um, in those conversations you're having as, you know, your veterinarian is part of that team. And that's, that's how it should be. You should be working together <laughs> to make sure your pet is um, living their healthiest, happiest life. But um, on that topic of empowerment, I find that people tend to take information better, like they retain it a little bit better if they can find a nugget in there that they they can pull from their life and say, oh my gosh, that's me. So I was hoping you could possibly give me mm -hmm. one or two examples of some patients and obviously no private information, but of cases where you have helped animals since you have added into your tool toolbox your holistic approaches whereas under the conventional medical treatment that uh, you were taught in veterinary school you may not have been able to help them in the way that you are now <laughs> yeah yeah the the first patient that comes to mind where we saw such a dramatic improvement um his his name's roper and he He's, he's wonderful. Uh, he, but however, he was having, 
he's an Australian uh, cattle dog and he, he was, he was hype. Well, actually he, he wasn't hypothyroid yet because it hadn't been diagnosed, but he was having a lot of back pain. And so they brought me in, they actually brought me in for their other dog that had a bladder tumor that was misdiagnosed and it kept being treated as a urinary tract infection. And so we came in and got the right testing and actually diagnosed the bladder cancer. Unfortunately, it was pretty advanced. However, their other dog was going through all this back pain. He was kind of grumpy. He was reactive. His coat didn't look good. And he was going every single week to the chiropractor for an adjustment for like the past year, every week. And it wasn't holding the adjustment. And so we went through, so what we do is we look at all the records. We look at like previous blood work. We do a physical examination, just like we would if, you know, if I was seeing him in a conventional setting, I do house consultations in this area. So I mm -hmm. get to see the environment too, which is really helpful. Um, so it gives me an idea of, you know, other factors like environment talks. They live in the countryside. There's lots of farming, lots of spray. Um, so pesticides, things like that. So it gives me a bigger picture, but we ended up, testing for thyroid disease, he came back really, really low. He was hypothyroid and he's six years old. And I don't know if he's had that his entire life. And so we were able to help that. We did some microbiome testing and he had severe dysbiosis present. We also did a hair tissue mineral analysis test and he was really high in aluminum. He was also higher in mercury too. And then he had some arsenic and cadmium and lead. Every single pet we test come back mm -hmm. positive for heavy metals, but it's the levels. He was at, I believe, 40 for aluminum. We want zero. So he's he's pretty high. So we needed to support his detox pathways and also adjust his diet and his digestion and all of that. Now he's getting acupuncture sessions every two to three weeks. His back's not painful. He's a different dog. His digestion has improved. His coat is beautiful. And when he goes for like the chiropractor, his treatments stay. So he doesn't have to go as frequently. And so he's a different dog now. And that's because we didn't forget about the conventional side. We just did a more comprehensive thyroid panel and actually tested for it. And then we ruled out some of the other factors that were impairing the healing of his body from occurring. He was already on a raw food diet, but because of the heavy metals, because he had this dysbiosis, the bad bacteria is outnumbering the good in his, in his gut, he wasn't absorbing or digesting the food. And so by tweaking and adjusting all of those areas, now his body's working much better. It's a longer process. That's the downside with holistic. However, he's doing really, really well now. We've been working together uh, probably, we're probably going on almost a year now. So he's doing great. So that was a really good example of like, okay, something's off, you know, just giving, he was on carprofen, he was on Rimadil constantly for his pain and it wasn't helping him much. And so this is where for pet parents listening, like if they have a dog or a cat and there's a chronic health issue and you're giving a drug and you're not seeing the improvements that you want, 100% try to find a holistic vet or an integrative vet that you can partner with or just continue to learn and then ask those tests to be run or find people that can run those tests um, and give you a better idea of what's going on. Um, one of the, the cats I don't, who's over here, uh, we adopted him right after our Finn, our German Shepherd passed. And he's a great example of what happens. Like he was a rescue. He, he was about 10 weeks old when we adopted him. <clears throat> he came to us, he had diarrhea. He had been on multiple rounds of antibiotics for upper respiratory infections. He was being fed a prescription diet as a kitten. Um, he was neutered, you know, as soon as they could. And this is a common scenario for a lot of, especially like cats, you know, we have upper respiratory illness. We have diarrhea, potentially. We have a lot of stress problems, got health issues. And, you know, they, when we got him, they said, he's going to be on a prescription diet for the rest of his life. And I was like, no, he's not. Day one, I took him off of it. <laughs> I was like, no. And we used whole food supplements. We used digestive support to help him. We made sure he was in a calm environment that we provided environmental enrichment for him. And, you know, he, he was one that 
we had a separate room for him and he lived under the bed for a week. Like I couldn't touch him. I would just like lay there and try to like, you know, just read and like get him used to feed him in there and get him used to us. And then he decided one day, seven days after we got him, it was safe. And his, his gut health is good. Now we've tested it. We've looked for heavy metals for him and he's doing so much better. Now he's a completely normal cat that's on a raw food diet. And so this is where like, you know, if I had just listened and said, oh yeah, prescription diet for one, that's super expensive. And two, it's a dry prescription diet for a cat. It's not the most species appropriate diet for him long-term and could potentially lead to health issues down the road. So, you know, he's just a good personal example of like being able to look at him as a whole and see where the imbalances are and what can we improve? And we adjust based on his his responses to what we're doing. And this is where pet parents listening can apply these same principles yeah, to their own Yeah, it's really incredible cats. that like you were talking about earlier, just the tiniest things that you can do to start out with and see some really, really huge improvements. I um, We interviewed a new pet sitter and it was really difficult because where we, we lived in San Diego for eight years and I had the same pet sitter for eight years and it was incredible and she was wonderful and she was like, you know, extended family. <laughs> um, and then we moved a, a year ago now and I am on my, this will be my fourth pet sitter that we've tried out. And I'm just like, I'm struggling so much with this. And I'm like, why is this happening? But anyway, she's a really awesome lady. And I really hope that, that, that it's going to work out. And she was telling me about um, one of her dogs. And it broke my heart because it's a, a bulldog. And she was showing me pictures and said that he is just like, she feels like he doesn't want to live anymore. His skin is so bad. Like she, she's, she's tried all the things mm -hmm. and he's been on Apoquel for years. And I'm just like, Okay. Well, I'm, you know, trying to, mm. to, to I gave her mm. a few different holistic veterinarians to look up and I, and I, I told her, you know, try the animal biome testing. And, um, I gave her some raw food and some raw goat's milk that I had in the freezer. And she called me two days later and she said, he got out of bed and walked outside to poop on his own for the first time in years. And I wanted to cry. <laughs> and I'm like, mm. I haven't even done anything, but gave her a little bit of food and, and raw goat's mm. milk. <laughs> And she was just like, yeah, she's oh like, he, it's amazing um, though, right? does, like she said, I, I had to pick him up to go outside to potty. And he walked outside on his own for the first time to poop in years. And I'm like, like, I, I'm wanting to cry just talking about it because it's these tiny little things that can make such a huge difference, um, in their lives. And, um, yeah. she's going to do the, the, uh, gut biome testing and, and all the things. And I'm like, please do. <laughs> please keep going. Um, especially when I hear somebody say that yes. they think their pet doesn't want to live anymore, yeah. you know, like that's horrible. Um, but it's the reality for a lot of people right now because of skin issues and, uh, oh, it's just, it just makes me so sad. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I just talked to a client with her cat and chronic pancreatitis and the cat's picky she doesn't know what to do. She She's going into the vet every three months for more testing. And his pancreatitis test tests positive every time she goes in. And she's told that's normal. Like, oh, he's not showing symptoms. You don't have to worry. And I'm like, well, being picky is a symptom. And he's not losing weight. And, you know, here's the problem. If we, this is like a hard place so many pet parents are in. And she's, she's doing the right thing. She's reaching out. She's, mm -hmm. you know, she knows there's something better, which is great. And that's where being the advocate for your pet and just pushing through, it can be hard. I totally get it. Like I spent years trying to figure out stuff for my husband. And the thing is though, is that when she figures out like reducing the inflammation and figuring out how to get that cat onto the right diet, that's the game changer. Because if we don't address it. And we just say, I always hear yeah. this is normal, but what they mean is this is common, you know, just because it's common doesn't mean it's normal. Normal is there's no pancreatitis. And what can happen is, is if those imbalances continue, that's when we see things like diabetes, we see chronic health conditions, we see autoimmune disease, we see cancer. And 
that's this is where it's really important to keep like pushing through and keep advocating and like listening to podcasts like yours where you're educating and sharing a wealth of knowledge and support for people because they feel alone in this journey and don't know where to turn. And there's there are a lot of different options out there. Um, it's just it can be hard navigating that space, especially if you're you're just beginning. That's very true. And it don't can know where to it turn. can feel very very lonely for people, which is why you know I'm. I want to keep, keep putting stuff out there and let people know that there, there are other people like you (laughs) in the world that realize that there have to be better ways. Um, cause I know I've been through, I feel like I've been through so much with my pets and you probably feel the same way. And, um, and I was that pet parent that I was, the most I, at one point I had 12 cats. (laughs) So I was in my vet's office all the time. Like literally people (laughs) just were like, Oh, Hey, Jessica's here again. (laughs) Like, um, I was always at my vet's office and I thought I was doing all the right (laughs) things. And at the time I lived in Virginia, so they were getting, you know, dewormer every six months because that's what they do there and all of their annual jabs. And they were, um, on the, the Royal Canaan food that the vet recommended. And, it, and, and, and because I had so many different cats, I had to buy different types of Royal Canaan food, depending on the cat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I like, that's like, I thought I was doing everything right. And, you know, fast forward, it's been about 12 years. And now I'm like, if I could look that person and, you know, talk to that person that I used to be, I'd be like, Oh honey, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there though. Like that's part of our journeys. Unless unless you're like raised in a holistic family and that's just like it's been ingrained in you. And even then, a lot of times I have clients that are like, I know what to do on the human side. I don't know what to do for my pet. And that's how I was with my my cats and my dog. And I always say too, like Finn, our German shepherd, you know, if I knew the things I know now, he probably wouldn't have gotten brain cancer, you know? And I look at when we got him, he was an eight week old puppy. And I was in, I think my first or second year of vet school. And, you know, I did all the things I thought I was supposed to do that I was being taught. You know, we had him on, you know, the, the German shepherd food that's made (laughs) specifically for shepherds. I'm like, what is that? Like, you know, and we did all the like dewormers, like you're saying all the jabs, you know, the flea and tick preventatives and, I was grateful that I was like, I, I would have called myself at that time a bad pet parent because I'd always forget like the flea and tick stuff or I wasn't as good with the dewormers. And I'm so grateful that I didn't do that as frequently because it probably would have led to cancer developing sooner for my pets. And, but we've all been there. And I think this is where there is some element of guilt, right? That can come with a lot of this. I've been there also and had to process that. But I think the biggest thing I always tell pet parents too on this journey is once again, we do the best we can with the information we have at the time, but also too, those pets live on with us forever in our hearts as a reminder. And I know like my cats, my Stanley, Callie, Finn, like they're here, they're in my heart and they're reminding me why this is so important that more and more pet parents learn about this way. And also too, that we continue to show the vets that are conventional and haven't learned that this way is actually a better way to integrate into their treatment plans. They're going to see the results. And the more and more that pet parents advocate and ask Mm -hmm. for this way of medicine, it's a movement. Sometimes the movement's slow, but we're all part of that movement and it's changing. And so, At some point, they're going to have to go, wait a second, why is this pet improving on a fresh food diet? Okay, they're not using Apoquel and the allergies went away. Mm -hmm. There's only so many times you can say, oh, it's a coincidence or it's a miracle, right? And at some point, you see so many cases where things are healing, they're improving without the use of conventional medication where we have to wake up and go, okay, there is something happening here. I need to see what's going on and I need to start implementing that or else I'm going to have no patience anymore to treat or be out of business. And so there is, there is a movement. And what I love working with conventional vets, the ones that are open and want to learn, they're like, I have no idea what to do, but I'm super interested in learning. 
like what you're doing, why you're doing and how this works. And that's where yeah, the game will change. I think that, first of all, I'm so glad that you're finding conventional veterinarians that are open to to change. And that's really promising. Um, like you said, it's things are changing. Things are like there is definitely a movement. There's definitely a shift happening. And how quick that's going to be, I don't know. And this is probably a topic for another another episode, um, possibly with, with, with a roundtable. Um, I know uh, Pam Roussel and I have been talking about it. Um, but the... Just, you know, the burnout that veterinarians have and the high suicide rate that they like everything that goes along with being a veterinarian today. Um, I know personally, mm. the veterinarian I had in San Diego, I was close enough to her that we talked about like her business and she couldn't handle like she just couldn't handle learning something new. I talked to her so many times about, um, you know, in, adding in some holistic modalities into her practice. And she's like, I know you're right. And, and I see it's working in your pets, but I don't have the time. And like I, I spent, she literally was working in her practice yep. and couldn't work on her practice for, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day, six days a week. And um, the burnout that veterinarians have, but if they could just make that little shift when you, when you, when you work with animals to help them be healthy and vital and hopefully don't get all of these diseases on down the road, like it's, it's like with anything else, I think you put a little, a little bit more effort in up front and you get that payoff in the end. And I think the, the relationship that people can have with their veterinarians will, will change dramatically too, because, you know, well, of course, right now there's also that, um, you know, people, people have to realize that you get what you pay for. And, and, you know, a lot of people want all kinds of pet services for free. <laughs> um, and that's unfortunate because like, this is how you make a living. This is how I make a living, right? Like this is, I'm trying to pay my bills just like you are. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, it, like outside of that, when people can actually see like, this person is actually helping my pet and see changes and see their pet getting healthier. I mean, to me, that's priceless, but I think that that can change the vet an individual person as a veterinarian change their life. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I can just see, see the vision. <laughs> yeah. Well, alongside that, I mean, this is the hard part because there's not enough veterinarians. It's getting worse. The, for one thing, just be kind to people too. Like, I think that's a big thing. Even if you're not super oh, yeah. happy with your vet, they're, just, they're probably struggling, to be honest. They're, you know, they have 15 minute appointments. They've got back to back corporations are buying out vet clinics and they're making you hit numbers. Huge reason why I left conventional to start my own business. I was like, I can't practice good medicine in 15 minutes. And so, you know, just remember to be kind and have some patience, even though it can be frustrating. But the other reason why, too, is, I mean, for one, we saw an increase in pets. But two, if we're not applying these principles, pets are getting sicker. They're not getting healthier. And that's a problem. And they're also getting harder to heal. So now this overwhelmed, stressed out vet who already has a full schedule now has 10, 15 emergencies on top of that because there's a severe ear infection. This dog has blowout diarrhea, like all these things mm -hmm. now start piling on top. And it's a broken medical system. That's the cause of it. So the root issue of that problem is how are we training veterinarians? Oh, and yeah, that's a sure. huge, I mean, this is obviously it could be a topic for another thing, but it's, it's one of those things where the root issue of the problem for the human health and the, the pet side too, is what are we teaching them in school? Because if you're actually training them appropriately to look at your pet as a whole, and we're actually training them that fresh food doesn't actually have to kill your pet. Um, if you do it appropriately, then now it's a different situation. You have vets that feel empowered coming out and they're able to implement from day one, those tools, that knowledge, and you don't have to learn a new skill set. Very different. That's where it changes. And so, and then we have healthier pets. We have people that are actually trained to, to actually identify the, the real issue 
and assess it and do the right diagnostics and not just guess and not just, you know, a pill for every ill and keep having them come back because I guarantee yeah. you, your vet does not enjoy seeing, they probably love right. seeing you and your pet. Mm -hmm. They don't love seeing you every week for that ear infection that won't go away. They're not doing that for money. They're not making any money off that. I promise you. It's frustrating for everyone. And it's just that there's not the tools that are necessary for them to change that because yeah. the root issue it sounds is like somebody education at the vet school. A new you know, school. it's that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> go up against the people funding vet school. <laughs> so yeah, that's the problem sure. right there. The, where's the funding? So, you know, I, that's, the, that's the hard part is there's, you know, there's bigger overarching things, but if we really truly wanted to get to the root of it and change the system, that's where it has to change. And I mean, we're doing the best we can, which is good. And there's a lot of online education now that a lot of us are doing to help help reach more people because there's not enough of us, but at least we can give people the tools. And then also it helps you feel good that, you know, if your dog does get diarrhea, you have the tools and the knowledge to like stay yeah, out absolutely. of the vet clinic and avoid those vet visits and those I'm, bills. Like, like I was saying, um, I was that person that was constantly in my vet's office with my cats. And um, I thought that meant that I was a good pet parent you know, because I was going and I was doing all the things. And now I'm like, N I don't need to go to the vet. <laughs> like, I can handle this. <laughs> We're good. Like, I know what to do <laughs> if, if her eye's a little weepy or if my dog has a little bout of diarrhea. Like, I know what to do. I'm good. I don't need to be <laughs> yep. going in the vet's office forever for every little thing. Um, yeah. And quite honestly, I told you there's so many topics I would love, love, love to talk to you about, but I also want to be very respectful of your time. And I've had you for 45 minutes already. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering if you have any parting words for pet parents out there who um, are curious about alternative medicine. Maybe they are just really on the fence because somebody in their life, maybe it is their veterinarian, has really kind of poo-pooed all over it and said, Oh, that's hogwash. You know? you know, I think the biggest thing for, especially if, if pet parents are a little bit worried or they're just getting started in this realm is start with one thing. I mean, this can be as simple as removing like cleaning chemicals that you wouldn't want to put on your skin in your house, like as simple as that and using cleaner products um, or using a food topper or, or even, you know, trying to get away from kibble and transition them or add in a digestive enzyme. There's, there's a lot of things that you can do and it doesn't all have to be at once. And I don't want people to feel overwhelmed with the journey. So I just pick one thing and start there. And then also, you know, follow people that are doing this. Um, and we put out a lot of free content to help you get started. So there's a lot of great tools out there. We have a free guide, like simple guide to optimizing your pet's food for dogs and cats with a lot of great resources. So that way you can learn more and, you know, learn what's in pet food. So that, that way you can have a conversation with your vet and you feel more comfortable. So I would say pick one thing that you can start doing from day one that will make a difference. And then two, find a couple holistic veterinarians or integrative vets that you feel connected to, you like what they're saying, that you trust, and just start diving into their free content. And you're going to gain so it much is. knowledge just doing that. I was actually just checking and out your website again free, before nice. um, I jumped on with you. And I love, I, first of all, I love the design of it. It's so like easy to navigate. Um, so where can people find you? And I know you, like you were just saying, you have a ton of free content. Um, and then if people want to take it a step further, there, there are additional resources on your website, right? Yep. Yep. We kept everything easy. So the natural pet doctor, um, so naturalpetdoctor.com and we have some eBooks for people if they want like different life stages, information for cat and dogs. We also have a lifetime blueprint program that goes more into depth into the five pillars that, that I teach a lot on that are going to help optimize your dogs and cats. So those include like weekly Q and A's in a community setting. So that way you do gain support and also the support to really like dial in what's going on with your pets and not feel alone. So you have an entire community of 
like-minded pet parents and myself helping you. And it's a lifetime thing. So once you're in, you're in forever. Um, so that's been really powerful at helping people. Um, so if you're interested in that, there's a free masterclass that you can watch to get more information, learn a little bit about how I teach if you're new to the natural pet doctor. And then we do interviews with you to make sure it's a good fit. So that's kind of like our classic program that we have for that's pet parents awesome. to really, I really dive appreciate deep and that, provide um, support for them for life. You have that available for people because they, we need it. As you, as you well know, <laughs> there are just so many people out there that that need it and that need a support group. And, um, I don't, you know, depending on who's listening, you may or may not follow any motivational speakers, but it is so true that you are like the culmination of the people you, you like the 10 closest people to you. And so when you have a community like that, that you have set up, um, Dr. Katie, and you surround yourself with people that you want to be like, you will become like them. <laughs> so that is so important. And I'm so glad that you have that for people. Um, because that's how you, that's how you get where you want to go is you have to surround yourself with the people that you want to be like. <laughs> um, so I'm so glad that you, you joined us today and I really hope everybody checks you out. It's, um, the okay. natural pet doctor everywhere, right? If people want to find you on YouTube, Facebook, all the places, Instagram. Yes. So yep. go follow Dr. Katie. Um, and of course, yep. I, I know I normally end by saying, give your pets some extra love. So do you want to give some pets some extra love today? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I mean, we can all help our pets thrive naturally and help them. And I love that the, the love, but also it's going to help improve thank the you. longevity. I, actually, of I have one more question too. for you. So and yeah, I'll thank you, you so much, Jessica, for having me. What's your favorite band? <laughs> huh. Interesting. It does, wow. Doesn't it? <laughs> it depends on my life stage, I guess. Like right now, it does. It changes. Like I used to be like the crazy, like Dave Matthews band, love that, and go to the concerts. But now I'm a country girl. So, you know, I, oh my gosh, I love. I'm trying to decide, like, I love country. Country is my jam. So, yeah. uh, but Luke Bryant, um, Keith Urban, I'm not supposed to know about this. I think we're going to, I have a concert coming up that my husband's surprising me. So, and I've never seen him in concert. Actually, so <laughs> I'm so excited. I either, but, um, so yeah, I'm sure he puts so on country, I have to go show. Channel. So I, I know you will enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. My, my default yeah, is usually Jimmy excited, Buffett, but so. again, like you said, it's like, depending on the day of the week. <laughs> it changes, right? Yeah. I mean, there's like, I love Imagine Dragons oh, too. And you for, know, if I'm working out, you know, so I don't know if you watch Stranger I'm, Things. I'm all over the place. Um, but I was super stoked <laughs> this past season four was, came out I a couple months it. ago. And um, so these kids, it started out in the late 70s, and now they're in the 80s. And um, they have metallic, like, one of the Metallica songs is, like, a huge, huge part of season four. And um, so it's, like, a thing. And I'm, like, yes, thank goodness, because my little nieces watch it. And so now my, not my oldest, my right. second oldest niece is, like, super into all the music and I, so the the kate bush song that nobody ever heard of is from the 80s it's now like super popular again and she's earned like millions of dollars from the royalties from stranger things fans but like apparently like metal bands are back again and i'm like yeah like <laughs> i know right good yeah i mean no, i was a little have, worried about our music for a little you. while so <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. I know. I know. Well, my, my book club, um, oh, showing our we age, asked each right? other, like, if you could only <laughs> listen to one uh, artist for the rest of your life, like, what would it be? Right. And that was so really, really hard. And I, so I finally decided on the Eagles because I'm like, okay, they have just such a huge book of music. And then of course, everybody's like, really, like, you're really showing your age. <laughs> I'm like, That's well, a good I choice. mean, like, you know, you, you want to have something that has like, variety but then they also have like i don't know a bajillion number one hits <laughs> so, you know it all no i agree 
I'd have to go with something <laughs> from the eighties. Okay, okay. Well, uh, Eagles um, would be good. Yeah, I try. I agree. I'm, That's a I'm good trying choice. to remember to like implement this at the end of my interviews to kind yeah. of lighten the mood a little bit and kind of get kind of get down with like we need to make so many changes <laughs> and we do, but you know we're people too, and yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe somebody can can resonate with you and, and your Dave Matthews band and they'll seek you out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Listen to Crash together while All we right, work Dr. on Katie, a treatment plan. Thank you again so much for being <laughs> so. here. Um, hope to have you back um, either here or on. I don't know. We haven't. I, sh it's a secret. Um, Pam and I, along with uh, Janet, we're, we're coming out with a new podcast, um, Pet Health Junkies. So we're hoping to to get a bunch of people to come on there. And um, yes, I know she's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> she's awesome. I love and Pam. we're just so very we're, lucky we're that we kind of too, all so. ended up <laughs> in the same town somehow, awesome. some way. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of, I don't know. Oh, I didn't know that actually. Oh, wow. Or something. But anyway, um, so thank you again for being here again. I want to be respectful oh, that's of your time awesome. and hope to have you on again. And I hope everybody go follow Dr. Katie right now. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day. Good. Yeah, thanks, Jessica. Thanks so much. Oh, oh.